What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Inside Robbie's Closet. I'm Robbie, obviously, and we're here to take a look at some various modern Air Jordan performance basketball shoes. So we're going to go through the 33, 34, 35, 36, Zion, and why the 36 has just enough similarities to the 36 to make it great, but not a ripoff. So let's go ahead and get popping. First here we have a very ambiguous white box, nondescript. One thing uniform across all these releases are white boxes. We also saw a white box with the new Trey Young shoe dropping. So white boxes and signature shoes seem to be a move amongst brands. Only difference is one of these shoes is special edition. So that box is not white, and we'll go over that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and open up the first one. This box is super cool. It definitely gives you, like, Spaceman vibes. Nice Jumpman on the inside. Nice, crazy metallic paper here. And on the inside it says, AJ33 Engineer for the exact specifications for flight. So you have this, like, flight-looking paper here. And you open her up. And we have the heat map colorway, ACG inspired Air Jordan 33. And I wanted to start here, so I wanted to keep it super modern. I feel like there's hints from this shoe all the way on to the 36 that are relevant to one another. So I don't want to go to the 32, start here at the 33. And let's go over why this shoe is good and why this shoe has some issues. So let's go ahead and start off with what makes it good, right? You have that big, beautiful Air Jordan 3-esque tongue here. You have Nike Air on the back heel. You have similar language here on the midsole tooling to the Jordan 3, along with this overlay here on the heel. Now, what the shoe is known for, and it's no surprise, is it's no laces. Lacelessness. Super sick. It has this pull cord-like system that you pull here, and it tightens across the the forefoot and there's up to 20 of these ah! and that's how you tighten the shoe very unique very different that was all the rage before the BB stuff started really popping off to release the tension for the tightness you just achieved you pull this tab here you can also release when you pull this tab release them here a little bit too let it stretch out Really interesting system. It does lock your foot down very well. That's a great part of this shoe. Another great part is this clock-like midfoot on the outsole. That's where the mechanism for the auto lacing, I guess self-lacing, takes place. It's not auto, you're definitely doing it manually. Very cool watch design. Makes you think like a Rolex. High class. That's also the number one worst thing about this shoe. This module, like this whole mechanism here, you really feel it when you're wearing this shoe. I've played in about it three times, and I feel it every single time. I learned after the first to bring a second pair. Doesn't make it bad, just prolonged use. You really do feel the tightening mechanism here on the forefoot. They have to put it somewhere, and normally this is a more flexible re region. The 33 is very rigid. I'm trying to push the heel and the toes towards the ceiling, and it's just not happening. But that's okay, because you have this great four-foot zoom heel, pardon me, four-foot zoom unit, and you also have a hexagon-shaped zoom unit in the peel. So heel and forefoot, you can see it's raised in the forefoot, like just about every modern Jordan signature shoe. You have this strap here that I don't really think works very well, but it is a cool design cue, and it does help that big tongue stay in place. I'm trying to look as I lace it, I guess, string it properly. So you pull this here, it comes up across there, and you have the lockdown system of the 33. Pull tab here, pull cord, I should say. Strap, four foot extra support using the same cable methods. These cables are actually made out of parachute cord. So if it's safe enough for the sky, it's safe enough for you. The traction is really good. 
even just running a, even running against it now, it feels very nice. 33, the 33 low was very cool. It didn't have this big funky tongue. That might be the move for you. Let me know if you have a pair of 33s and if you felt the same kind of forefoot tension that I felt. If you can use your imagination, you can think of what the next shoe is going to be. We have a beautiful XXX4. 34 for you who don't count very well. Another white box. This one has a great texture to it. Maybe the camera is picking up on that. Feels very good. Has this really cool, I'm not flush, I guess, receded opening face of the shoe box. Unflap here. In any shoe brand, I don't like flaps like this. They always get pinned in. I don't know about anybody else, but it happens to me every time. You pull out this way and you have beautiful black. This is actually the Eclipse colorway. Mello wore this a ton. Just a black and white Jordan. It's fantastic. You don't always have to go crazy. You either have to go full crazy with the colorway or very simple. And I think this is very simple in its purest, most beautiful form. The 34 has been played in quite a bit. You can see this really cool Eclipse, different phase of the moon inspired outsole. I keep saying Eclipse because this thing here is the Eclipse plate. This is the first year they introduced this technology. Maybe you can see my eyes through it, because I can see you. There's hole, completely hollow here. Hollow here to a zoom unit in the heel and a zoom unit in the forefoot. This space here allows the foot to contort and tweak in a way that you need it. So you get great lockdown with the floor, stabilization here, and you still get the bounce and flex from when you take off and then when you land on your heel. This Eclipse plate really helps achieve a sensation you can't feel anywhere else. Now, the Jordan 28 started all this liveliness with plates. It was the flight plate to start off with. Since then, Jordan basketball tech at the highest level can't be touched in my book. Adidas does some really cool stuff with Boost and Light Strike. They do some great things. But this Eclipse plate, the first version here, I say first version because V2 comes in the next shoe. This gives unlevel com unlevel comfort. You have to have it on foot to feel it. This is obviously, again, inspired by the Jordan 34. Pardon me. The Jordan 4. This is the Jordan 34. Some models featured the Nike Air on the back heel. Newer colorways, or I guess fresh inspired colorways, had a Jumpman on the back. This happens to have a 3D looking jump man. Very cool. Also have a white jump man on the tongue. Very cool eclipse pattern. Really can't make it out very well on the inside of the tongue. You can see the zoom air model through this little window here. Also very cool. Textiles are very unique. They feel like they're going to give out. Doesn't feel like it has a lot of support. But oddly enough, it really does. My one gripe with this particular model, the 34, is how it laces. The 33 had that awkward mechanism here that you could feel. It wasn't great, but the lockdown sensation at the top of the foot, unbeatable in the 33. It feels fantastic. The laces and the eyelets here at the 34 always slip. I have to relace two, three times in a session, and that's with me double knotting. They always want to release a little bit here. I don't like that. The overall feel, lightness. At the time, this was the lightest Jordan model from the signature line they had done. And they achieved stuff like that because it's see-through. I almost want to move the light so you can see from through it. But I can see you again clearly in the camera through the upper of this shoe. Really cool 3M material here. It does have a good, you know, this trigger here does help you, rigor does help you from sliding out. This material isn't the most supportive and the laces don't stay down, but you're not gonna be blowing out this way as you stop and cut. Very comfortable shoe overall. The underfoot feels great. And that Eclipse plate, there's only one brand doing it and it's Jordan. I like how they can take Nike's stuff like Zoom Air and a carbon fiber plate and make it their own, but in a very Jordan-esque way. This next shoe here, duh, is the 35. The coolest box of all of the boxes. This is a special edition. If this wasn't, it would just be a normal white box. But like the 34, 
It utilizes the Eclipse plate, but numero dos, version two. This opens really cool. So, I got, I got to fight with it first. I forgot how it opens. Again, tab here, not my favorite. But you open that, then it flips open like a half roll. And then the second part rolls open this way. Pretty fucking cool. I really enjoy that feature. Very clean paper, 35 paper. This is one of the hottest colorways, I think, of last year of an on-court shoe. The Luca Doncic, 35 low. There is the 35 mid or the OG 35 with a higher cut. We don't have that available today, but we do have this gorgeous Cosmic Unity or Cosmic Chaos. They're calling it something like that. The Luka Doncic logo on the tongue with the galaxy print. God, it looks good. You got the pink on the heel with this lime green. This, night, this nice white leather here. You have the Jordan equivalent, a fly wire here. It's called flight wire. Very original there. But the highlight of the shoe, and you can't miss it, right? This metallic purple TPU piece really gives it away. I believe it's uh, uh, Peabot or Peabos. That's the name of the Peabeck, something like that. The name of the plastic in here. Um, this is the main feature and they don't hide it at all. Again, I can see right through it and you can actually see here the forefoot and the heel zoom unit if you look through the Eclipse plate. Very cool, very clean. This is the only one of the 33, 34, and 35 where I actually prefer the low top version. I truly do like the way the 34 high looks. The low is very, very similar but just the mid or high, the original version, just fits better on foot. 33, same reason. Only reason why I'd give the 33 low some brownie points is the exception, or I guess the removal of the strap and the big ass tongue on it. Makes it way more wearable. But even just holding it here, I keep catching myself staring at the camera. It's a striking colorway for probably the face of the league for the next 10, 15 years if everything goes right. It really looks great. He wore this with like his white and gold Mavericks jersey a couple times. Just the way that purple shines. It's a beautiful ass shoe. This is actually Rowitz. This is not mine. This is a 10 and a half, but I needed it for this endeavor. Look at how good that is. Ugh. I should have bought a pair of 35s. I messed up. Even just holding the grip again, the herringbone that Jordan Brand has really mastered feels so good. Great shoe. Tons of nod to the number 35 and Michael Jordan here. Like I said earlier, it's pink on the back, but it's also Nike Air on the back heel. Very cool stuff. Before I jump to the 36, let's take a step back and let's take a look at the Young Buck. Because we're at 36 with MJ, but it has to start somewhere for Zion. So here we have the Zion 1. Did a little review about a month ago on another episode of Inside Robbie's Closet. Go back through the history of Instagram Lives and go check that one out. But the Zion 1 has a lot of interesting stuff going on for its $100, $120 price point. Excuse me, $120 price point. It has a full zoom strobel. Not zoom, it says, it says air strobel. So Nike Jordan brand doesn't distinguish what type of strobel it is. To the feel, it's an Air Max equivalent. It's a big, long, puffy Air Max, and that's a good puffy. You can feel it when you wear this shoe directly underfoot, what you're stepping into and what you're stepping on. So that full length air strobel is paired with a four foot zoom air unit. We have double stack with the, with the Jordan 33. I believe we have double stack zoom in the heel of the 34. I don't know about the 35, but the Zion here is rocking with the same setup as the next shoe coming up, the Jordan 36, but just at a much lower price point with having that zoom and Air Strobel combined. Now, where they get away having that $120 price point is with the upper. The upper of the 36 is leaps and bounds more technologically advanced, looks a little more durable, looks more expensive. It is more expensive, $65 more. So they have to justify that some way. 
The Zion here has the synthetic upper. These straps do attach all the way down to the base of the shoe here. And you can't tell in camera, oh, you kind of can actually, you can see the straps through the black upper. Maybe you're catching up, maybe you're catching that, maybe you're not registering it, who knows. But it's a very cool design feature where it's not translucent, translucent, but in the right lighting it is. And in the right lighting you get the hits of this carbon fiber print on the back heel. They even have like a Nike running vibe with this midsole, right? This black piece here reminds me of like an epic react or something. Translucent, hot red, infrared outsole with the Z arrow like logo here at the toe. The Zion logo on the tongue. The tongue is interesting. It has, if you've ever held a LeBron 18, there's these divots in the tongue that help the laces sit at certain places where it should be sitting as the tongue goes up. They're plastic on the LeBron 18. They're more meaty. The Zion 1 has those same type of things. Probably can't make it out very well, but here, here, and here. And they protrude a little bit to help the laces sit, but really it's just the same kind of microfiber feeling material that the overall very flimsy tongue is. But a flimsy tongue is not a bad tongue. I think it's funny that it flares out this high. Like who's popping, who's popping their Zion tongue like that? This isn't 2005. I don't know who's doing that. But when you're lacing them up tight, it does give you a very nice around the ankle feel. Great shoe. I would say the best shoe for 120 bucks as a basketball shoe, not the best shoe ever or this season or across all shoes. But for 120 bucks, you want something the kids are going to like, look for his eye on for Christmas. It might be a good move. Now let's go ahead and wrap up with the last shoe here. You can guess what it is. It's the newest of the bunch. Again, in an all white box. I took it out already to have it ready. But we have the Jordan 36. I've been staring at it for a hot minute. I learned before recording this that this red metallic pattern here or line going across the shoe is made to symbolize or pay homage to MJ's chains, which I think is super cool and I totally see it now. A great shoe. I just keep, I get caught up looking at it all the time because I'm just amazed by what they're able to do at 185. Now you might be saying, Robbie, you were just bugging and singing all the praises to the $120 Zion. Typically a Jordan, especially the pinnacle, top of the line, mid cut Jordan shoe is going to be 200 bucks. They've been under for a bit, but back when I was growing up, $200 for all the extra accoutrement, be it a briefcase or CD or sweat towel or removable zoom units. It was a very expensive shoe. I feel like Jordan brand has gone away from that mega expensive lifestyle and lean towards something that rests right below that $200 price mark. Now you have the obvious Jordan 6 inspiration on the tongue, right? It's kind of harder to tell with this black and red, but the jump man are in the same place. I like how it's lower. Obviously you have to modernize it. Here's a, here's a Jordan 6, obviously, alongside the 36. Big, tall, clanky, plastic pieces, visible air. Visible air isn't a bad thing, but just a sign of the time. Big clunky midsole, neoprene-like booty at the tongue. God, it's just, it's, it's aged. It's aged so well as a lifestyle shoe, you can keep rocking this forever. But man, if you're gonna play, you can be PJ Tucker and go out here with this. I'm not gonna do it. A little too clunky. These are now the lightest Air Jordan models. I was saying earlier the 34. This has been eclipsed by the 36, even holding them both in hand. They're both size 12. It's a noticeable size difference between the 36 and the 34. Even side by side. Look at that in four years. So this debuted the Eclipse plate. This is now V3 of the Eclipse plate. Same tech, just refined. You don't have to be big and gaudy. They've got it smaller and smaller 
to where it's just a nice little notch of the forefoot. Even the gap between the outsole and the Eclipse Plate 3 is much smaller. This room here is half an inch on a good day. That's what she said. But what they're able to do here, the one qualm I have is I think it's a little over-branded on the heel. So you have Nike Air, then you have a Jumpman on this plastic piece right here that comes protected, oddly enough. I don't know why you didn't want to include something that is fragile enough to break off in transit, possibly, on a performance shoe. Very small thing. Tate Kubris, he did a great job designing this. But then you have 36 written out in words on this pool tab here. So you got Nike Air, Jumpman, 36 written, then a Jumpman here, Jumpman on the outsole. A really cool Infinity logo here on this tab, but maybe a little overbranded. I like stuff like this. You don't have to write 36. There's perforations on this tongue, on the pull tab that you would use here to put the shoe on to slide in. There's 36 perforations here. That's super cool. That works. That says 36 without spelling out 36. This is another cool homage. The Nike Air Jordan brand, the iconic Jordan 6 branding right there on the back. Looks very good. On the OG6, it's cut into the rubber or plastic on the front of the tongue. So they just flipped it around, put it on the back very discreetly. Looks really good. I'm trying to see if I can take it apart a little bit. Uh, I don't want to take it apart actually. Just the insole, the drop-in insole has a lot of perforations in it. That tied with this Leno weave, the synthetic supportive plastic upper, those together really give you foot ventilation to where if you're a sweaty foot person, this might be a good move for you. Like I was saying before, zoom air in the front, zoom air in the heel. I think zoom air is just going to be Jordan's thing until they replace zoom air. What they debuted it the first time, what in like 97? No. Zoom Air first was like what? The um, LWPs, the lightweight performance joints. So damn, that's early 90s. They've been using that same tech and refining it over and over again till we're in 2021 and it's still viable. That's engineering, man. That's engineering, my friend. That's very, very good. But just, I could sing whistles. I could whistle songs about the greatness of this shoe all day. I haven't played in it yet, but I haven't been like in hand impressed by a basketball shoe like this. Since honestly, I think it was an Adidas shoe. The the next level, the laceless joint that Trey Young wore before he got his own signature shoe, the mid top that he just slid in, the fully lin the fully lined blue boost one. That was the last shoe where I was like, damn, that's something new and different. Thirty six, a lot of familiar. Eclipse plate three, Jordan six on the tongue, Nike Air branding, Zoom Air, a lot of stuff you've seen before but just done in a new and inventive way that I think keeps the line going. I totally agree with people when they say, uh, Jordan Brand should have stopped at 23. I get that. There were some dark ages. There were some dark times before the 23. This is the kind of stuff where it's like, yeah, keep making, keep making inline signature shoes because they're good. They're good again. Make Jordans great again. They've been great. So yeah, 36, 35, I'm just going to throw the 34 here. The 33 is too hard. These three shoes right here turn Nike basketball Jordan brand around. Like, I don't know how Nike basketball can incorporate flight plate, eclipse plates, all the plates. They probably don't want to because that's Jordan brand's thing. But just 28, 29, 30, very good shoes. 31, 32, not my favorite. 33, you're getting there. The laces are fire. Mechanism hurts my foot. But once you hit the 34, 35, 36, you have three bangers in a row. I think when everything is said and done, let's say 15 years from now, they'll still be making Jordan signature lines. Don't get that twisted. It's not going to be said and done in that sense. But when we go back and look 15 years at these models, these are going to be favorable retros. They're going to be viable hoop shoes probably fucking forever. I mean, if people can still find a way to
to hoop in early 90s basketball tech and feel good about it in a new retro of it, not the OG, Jordan Brand and this kind of stuff is going to live for a very long time. So I'm Robbie. Thanks for tuning in and spending some time with me outside of my closet. Thank you, Jordan Brand, for supplying really every pair except for the Carmines and the 35s. Row it. Thank you for letting me borrow your 35s. But everything else was supplied by the brand, but they really are my thoughts and opinions. If I thought that shoe sucked, or if I thought any of these shoes sucked, I would tell you. Or I wouldn't talk about it. Who knows? But I can honestly say, if you're looking for something new, be it a young hooper, an OG veteran wanting to get back in the game, just go play pickup games in the park. I really wouldn't do these with outdoor balling. I would do the Zion if you want an outdoor hoop shoe. But if you want like a high class basketball shoe, go get one of these on eBay or StockX. I was looking 34s and 35s right around retail. So you're not getting a discount, but you're not paying anybody else extra for them. Check it out. All these shoes are really good options. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Peace.